Hello everybody! It's been a minute, I know, but uh, I've kind of been in the dark for the last month waiting on another Lucas to come, but he, he never came back. It was, uh, it was a strange month, but I'm out of the cave now and I'm back with you! Oh, hi Mr. Poe! This is Poe! And uh, today, he's not going to sit there, I am because he can't talk, um, but we're going to talk about Rome, because I've been reading about Rome, and it's relevant. Alright, come on, Mr. Kitty. Ow. 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 Let's go ahead and... In the span of Roman times, there were horrors as terrifying as any fiction thought of since. There were benevolent acts of kindness on par with any act of charity today. The human beings who lived and worked most often loved their families and their friends. Most were caught up between the constant battle of heroes and villains. All victims of their times' prejudice, misconceptions, and personal weaknesses. Held in systems of monetary exchange that saw great income inequality. From a Center City, the product of mythical beginnings who engulfed its neighbors, who suffered great peril in the infancy of its expansion. All of this to rebound with such force the world would never be the same again. The story of Rome is to me a cautionary tale of the weight of fear, revenge, and power for the sake of power. It is a warning of the corrupted potential of nationalism and even racism, especially when they couple with imperialism. The history is also a lesson on the effect of propaganda in the world that valued ambition, violence, and, and that power above all other things. Um, it teaches on how far the common people can be pushed under the rug, so to speak, and forgotten if the right systems and abuses occur. Many have speculated on the mythical founding of the old world and the new. But the story that commands most of the historical community's attention is that of Romulus and Remus. Twin brothers legendarily in the line of Greek hero Aeneas, who is depicted as a demigod and a veteran of the Trojan War subject in Homer's works. Written as the secret son of Aphrodite and the Hurts, he grew up to become the main lieutenant to Hector in the Iliad and was one of the few who survived the whole ordeal, thanks in no small part to help from the gods themselves. Later, the Roman Virgil tells us that after the Great War, Aeneas settled near the site where the famed city would be built. As for the boys, they would be born of a Vestal Virgin, and traditionally, the god Mars, while others suggest maybe their father was another demigod from the Greek hero line, possibly the most famous, Hercules. Another Roman historian we call Livy has a different perspective. He wonders whether this virgin was more likely raped or perhaps engaged in intercourse with not a god but a man and set the story cleverly to avoid the traditional penalty for burying a child, which uh, would have resulted in her being buried alive and the boy suffering death by means of exposure, which meant being tossed into the Tiber River naked as the day that they were born. Whatever the circumstances of their mysterious birth, according to the legend, they would survive a series of fateful events, and the rest would be history, so they say. Uh, just kidding. We're gonna we're gonna keep telling the tale, so uh, we'll we'll go ahead and get to it. But uh, meet me by the tree. But before we get there, 
If the stories are true, perhaps it draws a precedence for the seamless transition of Greek tradition as time extended. But there is also the chance that the story of the story of Aeneas was an in, an invention, a tool perhaps to uh, blend the two dominant Mediterranean forces into one, setting the stage for the coming attempt at world empire. Play with that. Hate that. Considering that the Greeks had colonized the Lower Italian peninsulas, it's not far-fetched to see the Romans seeking heroic beginnings with pick Aeneas or Hercules looking back, to have found their fathers steeped in the Witten tradition of heroes and gods would further help prove to shape the destiny of Rome as a shadow of antiquity. Uh, the story goes on to take on tropes unique to the Roman experience, however, with the rise of these founding fathers. It also speaks to the nature that would define the empire to come as murder, fratricide, war, civil war, rape, reconciliation, and the evolution of order followed in another tale from the ancient world that leaves generations in quandary. And the circumstances that led Rome from these prehistoric origins to the first list of kings may forever remain a mystery, but we can assume that the absolute power uh, deal may have defined the early Roman politics as power evolved. And uh, we can come... So still got some balls here. We come to this line of thought by considering the evolution and the nature of typical growth of power from a king in his city to something more and even thinking on its decline and the rise once again of tyranny. We can consider that once a political institution is adopted, it typically does not change lightly. So great events must have happened to bring about this 360 degree change in Rome. Also consider the difficulty of building a society from the ground up, especially when most folks around you were illiterate and just as power hungry as you might be. Hello again, everybody. The journey from one man rule to a republic and back is a wild and almost unbelievable tale. When we consider what the populace put up with at times, I mean, we really gotta ask ourselves the question, really? From the taking of wives at the whims of emperors, to the endless conscription of war, to public displays of torture, and even the infamous gladiator games. Now, Rome is a difficult, thing to understand in today's eyes. And I think a way to help square that circle is to think of the bloody court politics that define the times of monarchy. In doing so, maybe try and understand the paranoia that creeps in some, Rome, some of Rome's emperors afraid of assassination, and even maybe uh, an usurper from their own family line. I mean, I know we think that we're a cutthroat society, but most of us aren't actually cutthroats. So, I'm not making light of some of these horrors. I'm just hoping to help get you into the mindset of some of these mad kings we're gonna talk about in the coming next months. Another point of understanding to consider is to not take for granted the nature of myth and religion to these early Romans, and even those that they encounter. There are many examples, and we'll cover a few, where we see clearly these polytheistic peoples very much feared and in some cases even respected each other's gods and or goddesses. While it may seem myth to us or perhaps even impossible uh, to a vast portion of the Roman populace, the ritual honoring of the gods and the fear of the divine interference in their lives was ever present and easily manipulated by any willing to use divinity to pursue power. This is especially interesting if we consider that maybe the stories such as that of the twins and others involving gods and monsters were not necessarily dripping with honesty, but perhaps created by folks looking backward in time, attempting to make sense of the world that they lived in, or perhaps, maybe, manipulating those around them into accepting the impossible or ugly, knowing the power that the supernatural or extraordinary events have on the populace. 
perhaps hoping to use the fantastical to woo the population into a radical belief that those in power possessed divine blessing to be there. Quite the tool in Roman antiquity where religion and power were in a lot of ways one and the same. It's not far-fetched, at least in my eyes, to think that maybe the authors of these stories were perhaps even being disingenuous, perhaps dogging their growing imperial experiment unbeknownst to those who adopted and paid them to write or tell these stories. I like to think that some king had hired a man to concoct the story of Roman origins and was ingeniously mocked unbeknownst to him as the tale weaver describes some guy named Romulus. However it happened, the idea of Romulus's city was monetized and set to tourist purposes with time. The Empire even designated the supposed cave where the legendary she-wolf had kept the young brother's safe a park of sorts and spent imperial coin to keep it in order for centuries. This is one example of many on how myth and reality blended in these times. Was Rome's founding father a man named Romulus? Or was Romulus a fictional character invented later to help explain the unexplainable? Surely having a Mr. Rome was a tidy enough explanation for someone looking for something easy enough. We may never honestly know. Another point to consider before we leave you this time, while certainly of no serious power by the time of Alexander, this legend and the story past of the Greek experience had made its way into the hearts of those who would become Romans. Many wealthy and poor alike came to respect the late emperor's quest to rule the world. Some even, like Caesar, came to admire the man and the culture that produced him. Uh, the influence of the Greeks on all the Mediterranean is just hard to understate. But that's not to say that the two cultures were not just as different as they were similar. After all, the Romans would eventually engage in conquest of the Greek world. This doesn't usually happen with folks who fully agree. However, in many ways, the same arrogance in order that defined the Greek experience would define the times of the Romans as well from despot kings of prehistory to the developing republic, and finally to dictatorship and empire. The rise and fall of Rome is a tale of tales, and it is a story that makes folks remember that everything old is new. Thanks for joining us this week, and uh, we'll pick back up on Romulus and Remus next time. Um, make sure you like and subscribe, you, you give us some love, you send us hate mail, whatever you want to do. We just we just want you to, to be our friends. We can be best friends. That would be nice. But uh, for now, I'm gonna go do Lucas stuff. I wait for more Lucases. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.
I'm filming. Stop.